I think magic works best with food. Um, if there is going to be a finger buffet or something, if you start once that starts to be served so that people begin to anchor in clumps and then you can hit each one of those clumps of people or over the meal if it's a three course meal um, and then at the end you can do a, a, a stand up set for the whole room you can introduce the, um, the the birthday cake you can create a moment when the cake comes in um, you can introduce the speeches at a wedding you can act as a, almost as an MC at a wedding and keep the thing rolling quite nicely um, and so the magic happens over the meal and it doesn't happen while people are eating but it happens in those moments between the courses when people are resting um, and then you can pull the whole room together at the end for some stand up, a bit of stage, a bit of light, big help microphone is good A stand-up spot in a, in, a, in, a, in a large room is the ideal way to finish an evening because often the, you need that sort of point at the end of the meal where you say, this bit's finished, now we're going to start with the dancing or we're all going to go through into the other room or we're all going to, yeah, now it's time to leave, thank you very much, coaches are ready. Um, it's a very useful way of bringing the evening to a, a satisfying end or to point out the next bit that's going to happen. Let's roll the disco, let's get the band on. Sometimes it's nice you can do a short stand-up spot while the band is assembling behind, so that as your spot finishes and the applause starts, the band can hit and off they go. It, it, it can, you can use it as a, as a device to keep the party running continuously, or you can use it as a device to bring that part of the evening to an end. Right, the, the optimum number for a performance is about, oh gosh, about 12 tables. In the course of a, a three-course silver service meal, I can usually get round about 12, 14 tables. So if you consider that the ideal number at a table is 10, the 10 top, I don't know why, I do know why, the 10 top has an energy that an 8 or a 12 doesn't have. Um, sometimes people will say, we've sat them at tables of eight so that they'll get more magic. Actually, they won't because you've then got to do more tables to hit the same number of people. Um, a 10 top is brilliant and perfect. If it is a larger audience, then I have a team of people I work with who are compatible with what I do. And I usually allow one per hundred or part thereof. So if you've got a 400 seat, if you've got a 400 um, diner room, if you've got 400 people coming to your event, um, then you're going to need certainly three, possibly four. Um, and then everybody gets their magic. It's, I don't recommend having a magician do some of the room. The other people will complain that we didn't get our magic. And, and I try to avoid that. It, it's, it's really worrying when you turn up and there are 300 people in the room and you're the only magician. That's slightly... I know there's going to be a, a worry at the end of the evening. I can stay on and do some more for those people who didn't get it, but it's, it's better if you cover it in the course of proceedings. I think that people have got too much to do when they're arriving. They've got to order, in, at a big event, they've got to order their drinks or they've got to make sure that they know where they're sitting and they, they're people that they might not have seen for a year or two. I'm, I'm quite happy to do it, but it, I recommend against it because there's a, lot of, there's a lot of other stuff to do, a lot of housekeeping that needs to be done. And sometimes somebody coming up and trying to show somebody a card trick while they're trying to work out who the hell is this I'm talking to, I must know them from somewhere, um, can be... A problem. If it is going to be at drinks, I do recommend putting in some of those posing tables because, again, people will cluster at those and it gives you a playing surface that you can use. A lot of what I do is done with people, that, things that people, it's found objects. It's done with, I don't know, their lighter and their packet of cigarettes or or the, the napkin off the table and the bottle that they're drinking with, the money from their pocket. And so if they've got a canapé in one hand and a glass in the other, 
it's very difficult to get the atmosphere going and it's about that it's about atmosphere so um, if they're opposing tables at least they can put the glass down and, and applaud a little bit they can uh, put the canopy down and, and um, get involved with cutting the rope or picking the card um, that magic is about atmosphere in my book and so I want them to have both hands free in order to to applaud and to get involved that happens better in my, in my experience happens better over a table and if it has to be at a drinks reception and why not at least get some of those posing tables in I visited every table in the course of the evening or I or one of the people working the room have so when I stand up on my hind legs or bang on the table or whatever there is an automatic focus I have some great play on music which um, really does focus a room so they know something else is going to happen that part of the evening is over the next part of the evening is going to start um, so we're better all face front I can actually ask people to turn their chairs around and face front um, it, it gets them focused on where the next part of the evening is going to happen and because I know them uh, very much so because I visited them then I can I know that table 12 is going to be a bit of a nightmare because they've been a hand, handful all night so I can go over to table 12 and say oh it's all happening over here now come on turn around table 12 you know you you can actually control the room quite well and get them into that mood for the speech, for the presentation, for the awards, whatever. It can be very useful. I have spent too much time standing on a chair in the corner of a dark room shouting at people. I can do it, but it's 50% it's better if there is a bit of light and a bit of stage and a bit of sound. Um, good lighting is almost more important than good sound. Theatres spend millions of pounds on lighting. Um, I often r recommend that if somebody is going to make a speech, make sure that you're going to stand in a light. If they can see you, they will listen. If you were in St Paul's Cathedral and you had 2,000 people in there, if every one of those 2,000 people passionately wanted to hear what you had to say, you wouldn't need a microphone. But the, the worse the lighting, the, the more powerful the microphone needs to be. Because um, if, if an audience wants to talk over you, we've all been in those, in those music venues where the music is on the threshold of pain and you've still had a conversation with the person next to you. Um, so good sound, good lighting and staging somewhere to be seen. It, it's, it's very important. And if it can be arranged in advance, then it's worth giving some thought to that. The large dining room, the PDR, the private dining room, is becoming very popular. It used to be very rare to get 20 or 30 people around a table at the same time and be in a private room off a, off a restaurant or in a hotel. Um, it's becoming much more popular. Now, there is a definite knack to working those tables. Um, sometimes, often, the table will stay as one. Now, you don't want to stop people talking to each other throughout the entire evening. The whole point of them coming together is for the conversation and for them to, to bond with one another. Um, so you don't want to be intrusive. But there are those moments in the course of the meal, I like it, if a table is going to stick together, I will come in after the main, after the starter and do two or three tricks and uh, there is a round of applause and then um, my favourite line, I'm going to leave you people in here talking about me while I pop outside with the staff and we will talk about you. Um, and that sort of sets the tone of the, and then after the main you'll come back and do a little bit more and when you come in they're very pleased to see you and all oh, good here comes some more magic and after the pudding you'll do a little bit more over the table and then you go into a sort of stand away from the table mode where you are it's almost like um, a parlor show but for the whole room um, th there's just this change in 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 intention um, where the, and, and that can bring the whole evening to, to, to a, or that part of the evening to a delightful close. Um, 
So that, that 20 or 30, it's, it, it's becoming a bit specialist. I call it grand close-up, because it's just a bit bigger than, it's like the Grand Cherokee is bigger than a Cherokee, isn't it? And it, the, the grand close-up is the same. You just, it, it has to be visually consistent for the people who are on either side of you, but it's got to be an effect that works for the people at the ends of the table. And there's a certain amount of galloping around the table goes on, and you're not nailed to the spot. But it has to be visually consistent for everybody, accessible to the people who are far away, and, and, and not sort of weak magic for those who are sitting close to you. I love those, actually. I'm very, I look forward to private dining rooms. To get the best from it, if you're doing a, a drinks reception, I like to get to the, uh, the servers, if I can, when they're having their briefing, and recommend that they steer clear of me, the magician. Now, the reason for this is, 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 is many-fold. Um, they, they come out, they see a little clump of people having, you know, who have gathered around the magic, and their job is to empty their tray of canapes as quickly as possible. So, here's a nice shortcut. We can charge in there and get rid of, and get a free magic show. Um, but the problem then is that um, you've just got this audience coming your way. They're just getting focused on what you do. And in comes the canopy. Oh, what's in those? They look interesting. And you lose them for a moment. So I do ask that they steer a bit clear of me when I'm doing the magic. I won't interfere with what they do. Obviously, if somebody beckons them over because they're ready for a glass of champagne or they're really hungry and they want some of that, of course they go over, but we, we should work as a team. You need to work as a team with everybody else who is, is there to ensure that that part of the evening goes well. Um, and hopefully, if you've put some posing tables in, there will be those moments of applause and laughter that are going on.